Night Talk podcast, and we are back, season three, and we have an After Dark episode today, Private Talk, and I'm excited for this lady to be on my couch. You've been well requested. I am excited to have a conversation one-on-one with you. Private Talk, give it up for Miss Sherry DeVille. Hello, welcome to Private Talk. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Yes, me too. It's like one of those things, it's like I know you through other people, but I don't know know you, and I wanted to get my Private Talk listeners out there to know you a little bit more intimately as well. It's about time. So I time. needed to have you on here. But yes, tell us about yourself. You're an adult entertainer, superstar, have been around for a very long time, and um, I love that you have that energy still about you. You're super like youthful. You look very to the point where you still enjoy what you do which is really hard sometimes because he, when the, being in an industry such as ours is because people get jaded, people have bad experiences, and everybody, what I like is that it's uniquely different for everybody. You yes. know, even with their interactions with people, like, you know, it's, it's, it's human nature to not always like people or to be more chemically attracted to them sexually, yeah. and that comes out on, on film, you know, naturally. So tell us about all those things, Ms. Sherry. Well, I am Sheree DeVille. I have been in the adult entertainment industry for a little over 11 11 years now, which even saying out loud feels crazy. Yes. Uh, that is a long, in, in our industry, that's a, a pretty good tenure, you know? Yeah, for uh, sure. And that's why I say, like, it's you're so, so happy. You know, you're talking before, you know, we started, and you're just, like, talking how you were still working for companies. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people either don't or, you know, go different places in their life that doesn't. But you seem like you're still, like, as happy as day one. Yeah. To me, this is an amazing job. Like, I've loved it right from the beginning. And and like you said, a lot of people have, you know, a, a wide variety of experiences. But for me, I'm, you know, I got into the industry in my mid-30s. So I don't feel like I made some of the, the, the mistakes that maybe some of the younger people have made or that I would have made when I'm younger. You know, I while I was easing my way into the industry, I had another job, so I never have depended on this fully for my income, which I think does a lot of things, including allow you to make whatever choices you want to make in your heart without having money be an issue at all. You know, people choosing how many scenes they want to do a month, uh, what partners they want to have, what sexual acts they want to perform. A lot of times when money becomes a really big issue, those lines can get a little blurry. It's like, well, I can't pay my rent and I guess I could do this, you know, and I feel like those small decisions can add up to make sort of an unhappy person, a person that might feel jaded, a person that might not feel the level of autonomy that I've been blessed to be able to feel. So my kind of trajectory in this job has been different than some because when I was too new to make a lot of money, I had another job, Mm -hmm. you know, and then slowly kind of eased out of physical therapy and eased more into adult work as it felt appropriate and emotionally comfortable so I think that's why I still can perform happily for sure it's one of those things that I think that you know even with myself I started when I was 21 but I always said you know even the difference between 18 to 21 is quite a difference of not necessarily age per se by you know the number wise but as far as like um, experience and things that you're willing to do or be persuaded to think you know because we're already in the sexual industry and it's not that we not necessarily I wouldn't say care about, but we want to glorify certain things about us or we find things that we like, you know, about it. And that's why for me, I discovered my sexuality as, you know, in my 20s. But I could see at that age also how manipulative some things could go or if it starts to deteriorate, you're like, oh, well, I do need this fourth scene or I do need to make this whatever. And then it starts to become a, a ripple effect of where do those lines cross and where are your no list and yesness and, you know what I mean? And also big important things is agents, you know what I mean? Yeah. Agents who you who has who are on your side and who's fighting and advocating for you is a big thing, too. And someone who makes you feel that it's actually they're working for you and they're not working it's not the other way around and for a long time I feel like there was a disconnect in the industry because of those things and I'm glad to happy happily to see things kind of change and still be agents and still be you know big you know contenders in the industry and in the adult industry and still have women as yourself and like with me I never had a bad experience in my agency it was always you know there was other rumors and things like that going on but for me per se my individual path and what went I had a great you know career people were very respectful if it's because I was you know married earlier on to a performer who they respected or just respected me you know and I feel like it does kind of for me personally 
gave me more strength to do more scenes because then I'm like, oh, I feel like power. I feel like it felt such a like um, a gratifying, you know, exchange to, yeah. you know, show people. That's why I say it's one orgasm. It's helping people one orgasm at a time. So it's a beautiful thing. Well, you probably respected yourself. And I feel like people can read that, you know, you'll have um, you know, I'm just going to use the word predators. There are people in this industry and in all industries who are going to take advantage of people, whether it's financially, sexually, you know, and, and there were bad people even in physical therapy, but it's really based on the person's attitude. You were probably never a prey animal, if that makes sense. You probably sure. had My demeanor confidence. for sure is yeah. something that people are like, I usually, my mother would say, you have a really great resting bitch face. And I'm Good. like, it's because I like to deter people to come up to me for bullshit. Mm -hmm. If you want to break down that, you know, sting bitch face, I'm happy to talk to anybody. But, you know, it's also, you know, how you navigate through business. And, you know, and what we do is a business. Yeah. And, and if you take it as a business and if you hold yourself like a businesswoman, then people treat you like that. You know, even you hear bad things about all agencies, you know, this rumor, that rumor, whatever rumor, but I've had nothing but an amazing experience, but I also demand an mm -hmm. amazing experience. And if someone isn't going to give me the experience I need, I'm going to move on. For sure. You know? Knowing your boundaries. Worth. I like that. Yeah. Kudos to you. That's strong to have because especially, you know, we get so ridiculed with social media and all these other things like these other atmospheres that don't really, we didn't really have before where it's like, not that they weren't as adamant and like there was forums like Pornhub has, you know, all those things. Or free ones, free remember? Free ones. I was like, I know there's another one that I can't remember. Back in the day. But for me, it was, I never really like, in the beginning, I kind of looked here and there, but I didn't like to like, in like fixate on the negative because I was having a good experience. Yes. It was about what I felt and I didn't care if anybody watched it because I still got paid yes. until later on in my career. Did I it, like really get into the people watching it and then getting in like sexually turned on to that part. So it was like d levels to yeah. unlocking my sexuality, which I feel like also why it helped me have the career that I did. And I didn't, yeah. I also do things that I didn't want to, or didn't feel like I was ready to. It's not that I didn't want to, or feel like I was ready to yeah. next step lead do because my biggest thing in the business was, Oh, what do you do or what you don't do? And then it's like, Oh, just wait, give it time. You'll do everything. Right. And I felt offended to that because of the fact, like maybe it's true for some people and maybe, you know, touche, you know, like kudos, but I feel like it was like, almost like, Oh, you'll lose. You're going to give your soul away or like you're just for money. What dollar amount can I flash in your face to do right. this? And if I wanted to have the free reign of, if I wanted that dollar or not that, like you said before, the money dollar denomination didn't matter what you were doing. You would do it regardless because you wanted to do it. Yes. So it took that away. So for me, I was just like, no, fuck you. I'm not going to do anything. You know what I want to do? You know what I mean? And then just because, and I just took that stance, but yeah. right or wrong, but that's just my, you know, how I feel like me personally, I had to guard myself. Cause it's like, what do you think we're doing? You know, we well, do I it because we better. want to do it. We show sure. up. You know what I mean? It says, you know, when you're adults. ready, when you're emotionally ready, when you're physically ready, you know, Whatever that means to each performer, I think you're right. It doesn't matter what the fans think. It doesn't matter what your agent thinks. It doesn't matter what your peers are doing. If you're not happy doing what you're doing, one, it's going to show on film. And two, that's the stuff that I think does create internal problems, mm -hmm. you know? And again, this is not just porn. It's not just because we're having it's sex. Life, it's for sure. Yeah, any business. If you're, you know, taking shit from your boss and doing things that you don't want to do, that's not true to you. Yeah. Staying true to you. So what kind of scenes do you love to do? I know what you're known for and all your fans love, but what kind of scenes do you know that you, it's like just your favorite when you're going to, you know, decide to do that scene? Uh, for me, I have the most fun with unscripted, romantic, like I want to get to know like your soul. You okay. know, I want you to look into my eyes. I want to like feel your presence. And sometimes when I, you have an over scripted scene, you're so, at least not not you, but like for me, I'm so in my head going, what would this character say? What would this character think? How would this character fuck? You know, keeping that storyline through the sex. While the sex can be really good, if my mind is 20% somewhere else, it's 20% somewhere else. But if you free me of that, then I feel like those are my the most like beautiful... Yeah, authentic. So what kind of scenes, what kind of companies like that? Because I feel like for me, I didn't do what it sounds like because I didn't, I didn't watch any of your scenes. I'm sorry. Okay. You know what I mean? That's I right. like to masturbate till 
Nothing <laughs> sometimes, just my own sexual fantasies, actually. Yeah. But um, so, like, do you do a lot of role playing type of things? Like, like, like at like, home? Like, no, scenario type things? Because, like, for me, like, like, oh, yeah. In my for career, work? I yeah. did more gonzo of, like, what you're kind of You were in the gonzo things. era. Exactly. So, like, yeah. I did do cameo here and there, mm-hmm. but I never in my mind, and it's great that you're a great performer, obviously, that you think like that, but to fuck like whoever you're fucking in the movie, because I, for me, it was always like how I fucked, because you're hiring me. Yeah. Now, that's probably why I never got hired for those roles in those <laughs> movies. They're just like, you know how to fuck, Alexis, go and fuck. You Dude. don't need a script, we don't need any of that. Because I like, I'm very freestyle. Like, my show yeah. is freestyle. I mean, I have, you know, basis of things I want to get to know, but it's freestyle, and, and uh, for conversation and vibe like you said there's sometimes you have your porno boyfriend you see a lot on set or the times that you don't see someone and you're just so like you have good chemistry but just like yeah. oh, like seeing long lost lover you know it kind so of it's, is it's one of those things so it's cool to have that but i never had that 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 um thinking i guess of whatever so i feel like part of my main role in porn that i've been put into and that i've carried on with my own content because the fan base is there is like a highly fetishized mommy stepmommy older woman role and that is predominantly a femdom role you know in whatever way it's presented whether mommy's taking care of you in a nurturing way whether mommy's punishing you whether you know whatever that older woman is doing it's usually she's in control and you're being taken along for the ride uh, so that's my professional world it's like did you have that in your femdom. in your real personal no world? i'm a total sub yeah. I am the subbiest, subbiest but that to kitten me, ever. But that makes more sense to me and maybe because I'm kind of that way myself is because you're playing a role. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're not that 24 seven. This no. is like part of who you are for work. You know yeah. what I mean? And so it's, it's easier or it was easier for me to be like, Alexis Texas is a badass bitch and this is what it is. But I, I mean, I'm still dominant in my personal life, but I like to be I like to get to that level of being like being let to be submissive because mm-hmm. I don't want to be in control of everything in life. You know, yeah. it's, it's hard work out here. Well, especially in scenes as a MILF, like I'm deciding the positions, I'm running the dialogue through the scene. Like, You're like it's please, way someone just more tell work. me what to do. I Can don't want to do it. Can I just be the teen and have like one pair of cotton panties and get thrown around? Thank you. That'd be awesome. That's hilarious. Because like I'm buying like three piece laundry sets, all this money. It's expensive and on top. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. I it was funny because I had Tanya Tate on the show, I and I like I like I get I laugh uncontrollably sometimes. Yes, I smoke weed, and that helps too for other things. But when I get ner- not nervous, but like awkward, like so, I was like, if someone would tell me to do a mommy thing, like mm. I would laugh because I was asking her, "What's the scenario?" It's weird because I was like, "What's your?" And not that it's weird because I get everybody's fetishes, but for me to be in mm. role, like you're saying, like the character and like making that make sense, I'm like, I would laugh. Like I was like, "How would you?" I'm like, "Give us a scenario." Like tell us when. So I was like, if someone told me that, I'm like, I would laugh. So can you give us a scenario of one of your of your um, a little teaser? I feel like something that I do a lot is like, like kind mommy, like, like to my stepson. So maybe I'd be like, well, Hey baby, how are you doing today? And there's like a normal thing going on. Maybe we're in the kitchen and I'm cooking. And then all of a sudden, darling, do you, do you have an erection? Are you looking at mommy and getting it? Well, I can't send you out of the house like that. That would be completely inappropriate how are you going to focus on your schoolwork with a raging erection so you know just for his own good i take care of that erection like a good stepmom would i love that <laughs> and the fact that you can say with a straight face i love it because i mean again i envy people like that because like i'm a role player of things but that there's just certain things i'm like i would laugh like i'm just gonna laugh her but i think that it's just it's a great like community to be in there because it's very loyal because they want to be told men want to be told what to do as much as they don't want to be told what to do so is that one of your number one like customs out there like that they like request is those types of things or do you what are your some other things that people are wanting yeah a lot of a lot of gentle femdom a lot of you know I feel like and, and it's our culture is changing but I feel like at least with my generation and older men were really expected to be dominant, to make the first move, to get the woman, to pay for the date. You know, that's a lot of dominant characteristics. But of course, men are not inherently dominant and women are not inherently submissive. So I think that left a lot of men feeling that they needed to do these things that might not be within their personality. And that's 
I feel like that traps a lot of people. Mm. So I think the fantasy of having a woman take over those responsibilities. No, you don't have to flirt with me. I'm going to come on to you sexually. I'm going to use you. I'm going to tell you what I want. I'm going to bring this whole sexual experience to you. And in fact, I might even seduce you. So it's not even your fault, whatever happens You're next. You're taking all the blame. I'm <laughs> taking all the blame. I'm taking all the responsibility. And like to men in our culture, it seems like that can be a really freeing experience. It's comforting because I also think it taps into like, you know, the psychological part of it. It's like you want things that you don't have yeah. in a sense. You know what I mean? Because I'm sure at home, like you said, the people in life that show up, you know, it's not like we're talking about how we're the opposite in, in our porno life to real yeah. life. You know, it's how you show up and how you want to be sometimes don't always aren't the same of seeing those things. So yeah. it's like, I want someone to boss me around. And you know what? Yeah. I don't have to see her. You know what I mean? Unless I want to see and her. And a lot of someone. men want to get complimented sexually, want to get used sexually, want to be objectified sexually. They don't always want to be like, oh my God, on this date, you look so pretty. You're the, you, 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 like what about me? Mm -hmm. You know, well, maybe, maybe I can be the, the subject of a fantasy and it's not always about the woman. Yeah. Mm, yes. Ah, it's always about me. <laughs> You're like, it is always about me. <laughs> well, maybe not me, but my booty but for yeah, sure. Like, you know what is. I mean? I agree with like, that. I sometimes yeah. like you went to a room and I wonder if I'm like, they even know this is here sometimes. <laughs> Just kidding. But at one point in my life I did, I'm like, you know, I do have a face guys. Cause every box cover, that's how old but, I but, am. But, but, they're but, like, but, Hey, but. turn around. And then like this one, I think it was actually probably three that I can think of with my face. I was like, are you sure you're not going to get in trouble? Like, you don't want to see my ass. Oh, I'm winning. Really? Like, turned the other way. I like oh it. Oh my God. So you said yeah. you started, you know, in the industry a lot later on in life. Was there people that you looked up to or you watched porn or were you always just a sexual person? Do you have any mentors in the industry? I was more of a swinger. So I did a lot of, uh, I went to swingers clubs. I like lived that whole like scene. I've always been a bit of an exhibitionist. I've always liked variety. So do you live that in your personal life as well? Not anymore because okay. it's not safe. To me, everyone makes their own choices, but to me, living the swinger lifestyle that I did pre-porn would be disrespectful to my colleagues okay. because there's just the testing just isn't there. You okay. know what I mean? And I think like making those risky choices and then bringing those choices onto set just for my ethical would mm -hmm. not be the way. But, but I love that. And I feel like porn was like almost the next evolution of that. Mm. And when I first started, I didn't, I was absolutely positive it would not be my career. It was just like, I've been offered this opportunity and like, oh my God, I could do a porn. Like, that's crazy. I want to be 80 years old telling my nieces like, yeah, look what, look what, you know, Auntie Shree did. did. She was <laughs> fucking wild when she was younger. Like, I, I thought that. it would be like telling people I went skydiving once upon a time, but I loved it. I came and I did my week of scenes and I'm like, that was really fucking fun. That's real. That's fun. And, and I got to like, experience things I wouldn't have even felt safe experiencing in the swingers club. You know, like having a gangbang full of like amazing male performers that all know what they're doing, that are throwing me around, that are super tested, super safe. I'm in an observed environment. Like I can live out these fantasies in a way that my type A neurotic self <laughs> feels like really safe about, which made me go even crazier. Because the safer and more comfortable you feel. Or you want to explore. Yeah. You're just there for it. So porn ended up being an insane outlet for me to try out all this stuff. I don't think I would have had the guts, to, if I'm being really honest about myself, to try otherwise. Yeah. And I got addicted to it. And I kept coming back to L.A. And finally I moved here. And then eventually I'm like... You're really, this is your career, bitch. Like, you might like, want to turn in the around. And you realize that you have all these um, scenes like that you've done. Like, you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Like, you're obviously so doing this. So, like, now what are you going to do about that? Like, you're, you've done it. You know, you, you've next? taken the social stigma. You've embraced all of this. You'd be an idiot to not try and make a career out of this. So that's when it became from a lark to a business mm. and I got serious about networking, marketing, driving traffic, getting my own sites, you know, creating my own content, doing my own stuff and not just being like, I'm going to work paycheck to paycheck and it's going to be fine and for three years. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's cool though. I feel like 
a lot of people don't have a so-called plan. Like you said, you know, even myself, I feel like I got in when I was 21, still young. And then Mm -hmm. before I knew it, I was like, damn, it's five years. Like, what are you doing? You know, and then you think about it and then you go on the next thing and whatever. So it's really cool, I feel like, to advocate for people and to see like, you know, that that it could be people are financially smart. You're you're in a great place, you know, even if it was older or you being, you know, you're such, I hear one thing about you than your name. I feel like I said, I've heard from other people, but it's always been positive. It's always been, you know, people talk about you, ask about you. You're very, your energy is very um, bright. And so it's always been, like I said, I haven't known you, but it's like, I kind of knew you. So I was like, you know, when those, those people, um, it's cool to come and sit here and talk to me about your story. So I'm also excited to be here too, because I remember you probably don't remember this because you were like so famous already. (laughs) time but you came in to do like some sort of I don't know if it was fleshlight or another toy promo as I was leaving set and everyone's like Alexis Texas is coming to set and she's gonna take some photos oh no that's a good or bad thing no it's good I'm like I wonder if I'll see her and like I think I was like Hi. And then I left. You're like, hi. <laughs> but I was so nervous. I should have said more people, things. people, I feel like, I got so, like, with me, the whole thing about the resting bitch, people get intimidated by me. And well, I'm your just, fame, too. But I feel like, well, at least I feel like, because I'm me, obviously, but I feel like I don't give off that way, but I also do consider no. people's, like, standoffish. Um, it's just because I don't talk to, like, everybody as bubbly as me, but I, it takes me a minute to warm up. Yeah. Go figure. I have a private talk. But, you know, it takes me a while to like warm up to getting to like what I really want to say or feel comfortable to even having a conversation because I also feel and not being an asshole, but it's like some people I feel like don't even want to like I don't like to have unnecessary conversations because yeah. if you're not willing to listen to me and I'm not saying that I'm telling you what to do, but if I know that you're not engaging with me and you're just like having a filler conversation. I'm cool too. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm, I can save my energy for something else that isn't that way. Or if you're just trying to get something from me or exactly. like, and especially w- when you're like, you know, there is a hierarchy and when you're at the top, <laughs> a ho- a ho- well, there a is, hierarchy. we can say, that say there times. isn't, but there is. And when you're at the top of that, you do have to kind of wonder if this person is talking to you because they like you and thought you were nice because they're trying to get something from you because, mm-hmm. you know, so you do have to be a little more protective of self. Otherwise, you're going to waste a lot of time for people that don't want yeah. you. Yeah, you know? that was definitely, I mean, I, I have a, well, some of my best friends, you know, are in the industry, but it's also, that was the one comment I think that made us kind of all close. And I'm sure like you could say the same thing probably with you and Danny is your closest friend where it's like you have similar stories or like because you, you're, relate to each other so you're like oh I get that I'm not it's not just me yeah. like it seems like oh it's like oh okay I get it like, like the don't girls be... you come up with like yeah you all kind of at the same, same time and, and you same get trajectory. the whole little story yeah. exactly so it's kind of like a bond you know that's mm-hmm. created over time it's just like only you really get to know that like what that feels like or what that put that what's that put that stigma on you and so much people you know come at us all the time so it's oh, cool man. to see yeah. women supporting women and all those great yeah and I and I know we're talking a lot about the female performers but it does and and I have male performer friends as well but it does feel like the people that I get the most business advice from the most inspiration from the most you know ideas about what I want to do next are the other women it seems for me you well, know? because I feel like it's such a parallel where it's like we can relate so much where it's not that the men we can't relate to on the work side, but as internally as women, what we do on the softer side and, yeah. you know, and implementing it in our real life and like yeah. what works for us and whatnot. And the social stigma is very different for male performers than even now than it is for female performers. Yes. I feel like I'm, I am um, a big advocate of breaking those walls down and being yes. the first of things. Like, I don't like the word no. I feel like we get a lot of people, you know, turn us down. And it's like porn doesn't define me. It's just a part of who we are. Mm-hmm. And I feel like people think that it's like we're, there's more to us. There's more substance to that. And that's why I love having my podcast is because it's like having real conversations and knowing that, yes, we like to fuck. Yes, we like to do all this stuff for your enjoyment. But I also have a brain I have you know a lot of things that I do yeah. everybody and, likes um, to fuck we just happen to film we it. just talk about that doesn't it. mean it's all that everyone who has sex is about you know that's ridiculous so I have a question for you so going into starting the business later on in life you're already like set you know who you are as a woman you know 30 is you know round number to where you've like you know, fuck you, done I've shit. done the yeah. things, whatever. Did any, uh, was it hard to integrate going into porn in your personal life? People, did you lose friends or family or anything like that? Was like hard, you know, hardships that came about that? There were definitely hard conversations, but everyone that was important to me came around, if that makes sense. Yes. Uh, friend wise, 
I've always been a little wild, so I can't imagine having a close friend who would have even been surprised by it. Like, yeah. surprised, like, because it's surprising even to me, but not like, whoa, not this came out, out of left field. field, you know? Yeah. Like, I can't believe Sheree is like, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, we all kind of saw that coming, <laughs> didn't we? You know? I feel that. So, yeah, I think a lot of, I think what I, the more the most feedback I got from friends and family was like, shock and then just curiosity like Mm -hmm. oh what's this like oh what's that like like you know all the questions that I was curious about so yeah more more like oh can you tell me about this secret world that we don't get to peek into yeah so if you had advice for someone who was newly getting into the industry what would you give (sighs) that's such a good thing I would say go at your own pace make sure that the people on your team work for you Always make your own decisions um, based on how you feel. And in today's day and age, even if you have no name at all, even if you have one social media follower, start building your own content. Even if you're not able to drive the traffic right now to monetize it, I am so glad that I've been shooting content my entire career, even before it was particularly valuable to me because I have thousands of my own scenes. And even if I were to just throw them all away on tube sites and they all made one dollar a day that's enough Make that at this money, point girl. yeah you know what I mean so that's the big piece of advice like it's really nice to work for companies and get that fat paycheck and put it in your bank account but until things change and we get residuals y'all are your own residuals if you want Great. If you just want to do this for five years and bank some money and go on to another career, fine. But if you want this time to get you into your 90s, you're going to have to have residual income. And in order to do that, you have to own your content. So Own your content. You heard what she said. And I um, I have to believe that. I feel like that's the biggest thing, especially nowadays with all the social media things that have turned into money making, you know, content providers, even from viewing to all that stuff. It's like it's important to own ownership is the number one. And you can flex it onto the next platform. Okay, we were all making compilation DVDs and had our own, you know, dot coms back in the day. And then we were on clip stores and then maybe we're on Snapchat and then we were on, you know what I mean? It's it doesn't matter where that content goes. I've put it a million different places as the landscape of porn changes but I still own it. And also like do your paperwork because honestly, (laughs) if I really wanted to flex, I think 10 people have paperwork for my scenes. Mm. If I really wanted to flex, I could have it all. that's important nowadays. If I was a cunt, I could have it all taken down and own it all exclusively like, uh, what? Yeah, that's important because people don't realize and you're just like, oh, then they're like, hey, where's that model release? And then you could be like, oh, I have not giving, I'm not giving it to you. When OnlyFans started asking for stuff, like people came out of the woodwork, like, oh, do you have the paperwork? Oh, can you fill out the paperwork? And like people I liked, like I got back to and people I didn't, I'm like, I guess I didn't get that email. (laughs) Sorry, (laughs) but you know what happened to it now. (laughs) Yeah, now you know. Now you know I ghosted you. Uh, (laughs) You heard it here first. (laughs) Sometimes I feel like you should be responsible. Like you took the time to do your own thing. So why should you backdate and whatever? Now accidents happen. But like you said, if you like them. Accidents happen. But I get it. You paperwork, you spent 20 minutes filling out my paperwork. We knew it was, whatever. You know know what happens. Have you ever, what is one of the craziest stories that you've had on set? Maybe to yourself personally or other people that you saw and thing. I feel like some of my craziest things are like things that I've pushed myself to do. Like like I wanted a really beautiful solo when I was with this production company in New Zealand. And they were like, well... I don't think anyone's going to want to do it, and none of the other girls wanted to do it. But it's a a two-and-a-half-hour hike that you'd have to do in full hair and makeup, carrying your wardrobe. Everyone else would have to carry the gear. And then we would walk up to a glacier, which is cold. Extremely fucking cold. But (laughs) I saw pictures of it, and it was gorgeous. So I decided in my head, I'm like, look, you're going to have a really uncomfortable day today. But you're going to love this content for years and years to come. I love that. So I did it. You know, and I feel like I've done a lot of things like that where I'm like, oh, I hike? don't want to masturbate in 20 degree weather I'm after like, a two hour hike. Hard. Was it really cold? <laughs> it was really cold. <laughs> was it worth it? It was really worth it. The I content like that, is though. gorgeous. It's mental. It's, it's a mental gorgeous. game. Like you said, if you were like halfway in and then you're like Nen doing it, you'd be like, oh, fuck this, I'm over it. But you it know, was like so you said, cold. you went into knowing what it was. Yeah. 
So I feel like a lot of like the the wildest things I've done, I've been kind of like prepared for. You know, like I did a gangbang in the Mojave Desert, like doing my anal prep in a trailer. You know what I mean? Nice. Like, but I knew what I was getting into. But I was like, but the scene, but the scene. Did everything go you know? all right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's technically really hot. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. That's awesome, though. I like I like that you push yourself, and it's not necessarily like something that's like that you can't do or can't, you can't like feel like you can like succeed. But I've, doing. I think part of it is like, I used to be like a marathon runner and stuff like that. So, so you're like, just straight, you know, you like I kind of like to push my things. physical boundaries. Is that an exhibitionist? No, maybe? I am an exhibitionist. Yeah. You're like, yeah. So you're just always ready for like, yeah. that's a really great like thing to have just as a person, because I feel like there's so many people afraid to do like push those limits. And so yeah, it's like, I'm you're like, a well, thrill seeker. Yeah. It's like, you know, even for like bondage, like I don't necessarily sexualize pain, mm. but I love doing a bondage scene. Okay. Part of it is the endorphins. I'm a huge adrenaline junkie. And part of it is to see what my body can do. Like, what can this form withstand? What can this body Have you ever create? broken down to where Absolutely. you couldn't do it? Yeah. What was like your threshold that was like kind of sent you were like, oh, I can't finish the scene or I can't do whatever situation you put yourself into? I think... They're all different because I've definitely called red on a few different occasions, whether it's like too much impact or I've been upside down too long or something ends up pinching too much. But like, I feel like if I hadn't done those things, I would never know what I was capable of, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. And there's like a joy in that. I know not everyone feels that way, but there's like a huge joy in that for me and a huge sense of accomplishment. Like just with my marathon running, like I don't need to go run marathons anymore, but I had to know if I could make this body do that. I'd love to see your bucket list. I mean, it has to be <laughs> some crazy things on the list. Cause I mean, again, it's one of those things that I've had friends that, you know, do, you know, here and there, but just to the extreme all the time, you know, I mean, I, yeah. Good but time. I think my adrenaline junkiness is what brought me to porn it's like the endorphins the vibe the energy the intensity like there's and an addiction I get to me because somehow. i do see like thrill seek uncertain other things just not 100 throttle all the way on the max you know if i'm a little far behind you i'm kind of catch up to you sure you're like 12 dicks in my ass i don't know maybe no. is that how many you've no, had in your I'm ass i'm totally joking yeah, I, I'm haven't, like, Wait a minute, no, Becca. I haven't even had two but i'm just saying i'm just saying that would be a whole moment i saw one time on set i'm like mm -hmm. i'm like i saw it i saw two dicks go into an ass and i mm -hmm. never I was scared, not like, not scared, but because she was like definitely all into it. But I didn't think that that could work. Like yeah. I didn't know. I was like, more power to you. Like I just, yeah. Call there me, were two tiny dicks. prude. I feel like I'm like the prudest <laughs> porn star in life. You know, sorry about that. But I feel like I have my own sexuality and my own things that comes across very and well. But awesome. Yes, I feel like you don't have to take. Like everyone has their own thing, and and being genuine and enjoying it is way more important than how many dicks you can You're fit. Definitely in your ass. not tying me up. You're definitely not bondaging me in anything. I have. I have come. Yeah. No, thank you. I definitely. Good the though. only thing I did uh, for kink was. It was a fucking machine. That was the only thing that I kind of love that I, those. Those were you come fun. a lot. And I also at the Ooh. first I was like, oh, I don't know. It's like a machine. Like because just because for me a lot of things I think personally is like when you don't know the outcome. I'm a control freak about certain things. So I'm like, well, what? How, what does what do you mean a fucking what machine? Happen? Like what is that gonna do? And then I was more intrigued that I was like, I want to see what happens. So I'm mm -hmm. like, nothing really bad can happen other than me being I'm gonna come. So I got like that level. That yeah. was that was my big girl panty tree. I was you like, got this. but yeah. Um, um, I couldn't do, I don't associate pain and sex. Like I, I can't even, I like the way bondage looks, but not, I feel like on, on video, like I couldn't watch a film with you doing things, um, as far as like getting off to, but I right. like the art of it. Um, yeah, I'm just never into being, I like to, I like to touch things. I'm like to yeah. explore things. Sensual. I like to use my mouth. But I like, I'm just all over the place, you know, yeah. just a little here, a little there, a little, you know, everywhere. But that's hot. I mean, if, if everyone liked the same thing, the sexual landscape of porn would be so boring. Yeah. I you mean, know? Pornhub has some crazy, you know, you can find that. anything on there. Anything. I'm like, it's nuts. I'm all, it's nuts. <laughs> it's nuts out there. It's, it's nuts yeah. out there. It's pretty crazy. Although less stuff now that they did their big purge. Good for that. Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah, all of that. Mm -hmm. um, is there any kind of scene that you have not done that you want to do? Hmm. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of things that I haven't done, but I feel like at this point, after 11 years, all the things that I've like 
you know, had masturbation fantasies about all the things that I've been like kind of dreaming of my whole life in one way or another have been done. But new things always pop up. Yeah. Things that I didn't know I wanted. Like I've always loved like um, boy, boy, girl threesomes. And I finally got to have a boy, boy, girl threesome with two bi guys, oh. you know, and like the, How the, the dynamic is so fun. You know, I've always been in those moments, the center of attention, mm -hmm. right? Which, which is fun in its own way. But there's something really amazing about having everyone genuinely equally involved. Yeah. And that's not something I even knew I wanted until like I started meeting people and I'm like, oh, this would be amazing. Yeah. This would be a whole different way to experience this sex act. I love that you're you know? open to try new things. You know, that's exciting for the evolution of porn and continuing doing things like that. It's still like it's done in a safe way. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's like you said, you were in the world of swinger and stuff like that, which brought you here, which I don't think is bad. But again, being in a, a level where it's like controlled, this is safer. it's way more safe to explore those things to open up even more and let yeah. you really be who you want to be. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful thing. And if something bad goes on set, people are accountable. Mm -hmm. Something weird happens in the swingers club i don't know you're like who do i call nobody there's knows a, you can't nobody call knows. osha like where's hr like nowhere <laughs> you mean there's no hr in this yeah. <laughs> do you have a crazy swinger party situation story that was like the craziest like a crazy thing i've seen more crazy things than i've done because i was pretty shy but the thing i always loved watching whenever it happened in the swingers club was when um one woman would want the guys to run a train on her mm. and would just get as many guys that were willing to just go, 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 go. Like, go. how does that actually, like, I obviously know what a train is, but how long <laughs> does each one go? Is it a time thing or is it until they stop or is like, cause it's like, at that point, it's a lot of people. And then, you know. It seems to usually be until either the girl passes them along or they come. She's like, stop fucking me. Keep kind on. of, stop yeah. Stop fucking me. You know what I mean? Like, next, <laughs> next, or. Is that why the conductor finished. thing and that's why they do this? That'd be so hot. <laughs> Okay, if I ever have a train run on me, I'm going to do it in a conductor's hat and I'm going to have the pull cord to tell the guy to get off the bus. I like that. I Your like stop that. is here. You I suck. may have to be on set for that because I want to You know what I mean? Yeah, I like, Choo -choo. I'm glad I could be here to help you like, you know. The, 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 now it's in my head. Now I'm like, wait a second. You're doing Where's your my part? I gotta write this down. <laughs> that's, that's key. That's why I have so many ideas and I'm, damn it, I forget them sometimes. Yeah. Thank God for waiting. You know, it happens sometimes. Same. Do you have um, a dream like list of someone that you would like to do a scene with? Past yeah. and present. Yeah, I feel like, you know, I came in to porn in 2010 and I was only doing girl girl porn at the very beginning because that was my comfort level I mm -hmm. was like I don't know about these big dicks I don't know <laughs> I haven't met them I don't know about them you know what I mean it took me a little while to like meet some of the dudes so I feel like I didn't get to work with a lot of the female superstars mm -hmm. of the time like you and Asa Akira and like a lot of like the serious like OGs we just like Past each other yeah. in the night. So Past like each other to in the me, night. like those were like the first women I really looked up to and like, mm -hmm. you know, and I just missed them all. Like Bonnie Rotten and Bella Donna mm -hmm. and like they're just all, you know, semi-retired now. Yeah. yeah. Bella Donna was my, was my first, like, um, awesome. she was like the first one to unleash, like she wasn't my first girl, girl, but she was my first one to like that I was like in... I had an appreciation for how sexual of a being she was and so calming and waiting to like kind of just ooze your like sexuality out and really like helps me become like the feminine side of sexuality kind of yeah. thing. You know what I mean? It was really cool to have her be directed by her too. And she was That's a funny. really good friend. But yeah, no, she was, she was definitely, I know my big booty missed you too. You know, my, my ass could have sat on I, your face. I know. Sheree, you know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like, it's kind of like the 90s supermodels where like everybody knew their name and now they're right like, now. I'm no, like, no, no, no. <laughs> but now there aren't any supermodels. Do you know what I mean? I feel like that's no, happened to porn. Like, like there was like superstars, superstars, superstars. And now we're all just like, yeah, there are people that get booked more or less. But like in terms of the public, I don't feel like there 
it's not yeah. quite like that. I feel anymore. like it's just a different. I get what you're saying as yeah. far as like, um, like I always say, and then people think like, oh, you're probably like just bitter, but I'm like, no, I just feel that way. It's like there's porn girls and there's porn stars. Yeah, like, I don't think there's a lot of stars anymore. You no. know what I mean? And, and even before when I was actively in the industry, I feel like through the people coming up, would there be like two or three that stood out really in you know the bunch to be like star power to have like how to like a trifecta of things. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's hard. Like I definitely, I haven't shot in I don't know how many years, but and I like I wouldn't be able to tell you who's the top names. Like I have no I know. clue, and you know it's not as. Big but a no thing. one like th that's not just you. Like I don't feel like just people. People I bet like most young people, young men, twenty year old men could list two or three or four porn stars ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty years ago, and I just. I don't feel like it's this. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But I feel like we should do a survey. Like the age We're do a of survey, like private talk. The star mm. seems to be over. Well, hopefully it's not over because I'm still here. No, I'm <laughs> You're like I'm still here, bitch. No. <laughs> do you have any guilty pleasures? Hmm. Vapid pop music, weed, uh, just laying in the sun and doing absolutely nothing other than nice. laying in the sun. <laughs> Basking those are, in the sun, just those are some of the most fun slash useless things that I uh, indulge in. Yeah. <laughs> what is a luxury item that you enjoy treating yourself to? Uh, going out for food, not yes. cooking myself. Foodie? Like just yeah. Well, I don't even know if I'm a foodie, but I'm like, I just grew up in a really like financially responsible household. So like even things like going out for dinner, I almost feel like it should be an event or like should mm -hmm. have a purpose or have a date or like. Special occasion something. Type thing. So like when I go out and I'm like, maybe I'm alone or maybe I'm going out like just fucking because like to me that feels incredibly indulgent. Do yeah. you take I yourself love out? I do. I like that. I do. Yeah. What is your favorite for restaurant then? That changes depending on my mood, but I've been really into Asanobu lately. Mm, a sushi. A sushi. What makes you smile the most? Mm. My partner and my dogs. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So you are off the market. Off the market. Off Sorry. the market. I know. I don't make it public on my social media, but it's also not like a secret, if that I makes that. sense. It's respectable. Yeah. That's how I was in my past relationship. Mm -hmm. You don't put it in your face, but you just be honest about it. Yeah. So because of the swinger lifestyle you had before, do you guys do anything? Well, you don't do anything anymore. Not in swingers, just with tested people. Okay. He's not in the industry. But you're still but open to have fun with oh, people yeah. and like invite them yeah, as long that as, kind as it's in your safe. Own. Yeah. Safety is the way. Is that because of... COVID before or just oh, because COVID's of a whole like, other level. Whatever. Oh like, my God. It, are, you getting, are you getting the messy uh, tested and COVID tested uh, before they fuck you and your man? Oh my God. Well, uh, to me, I feel like fellow performers are a safe space. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cause you know, even if you don't have that 48 hour COVID, like we're all testing like four so times, times a week, we're all SDI testing every two weeks. Like you're a performer. You're to me, you're on my like approved list you know what I mean like you've been keeping your You're shit a pretty go. safe green light we've got right. it I'm not like checking tests before I bang in my personal time but I'm vetting the people I if like that, that makes sense I like, yeah I like that so what would say your five-year plan for your business god I hope I'm still doing this in five years I say that every five years I'm like surely my name will be dead in five years and it'll so dramatic <sighs> <sighs> you know, yeah I am I'm very dramatic your fans are yeah. like no I'll be jerking off to you forever I promise <laughs> listen if I can roll in in a walker and take a pounding I'm gonna do it like do not think I won't if she you will not me, be anywhere if you keep me I'm gonna be here till I'm 80 so that's on y'all that. that's on y'all you're gonna be you know R.I.P. Betty White you're gonna be the Betty White of porn mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I died during porn, I'd die happy. <laughs> Had a heart attack you on heard it set here first. at 95 years old. Like, down, down, down. Uh, I'm glad that I could, like, put all these great things, all these great ideas I'm giving you today. Yep. Look. I got to write them all down. <laughs> Sheree DeVille, nursing home orgy. <laughs> All orderly and Sheree. You're going to be kicked out of all the nursing homes ever, but I'll come and bail you out of them. I'll be like, Thank next you. one, Sheree. Let's go see if they'll take you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll be like, y you hold yourself out of this one. You weren't supposed to film everyone fucking, and you weren't supposed to put it on Pornhub, but you did. Only Again. fans would not be existing. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, How would you mm -hmm. want to be remembered, since we're talking about your um, Betty White? How would I want to be remembered? Oh. You know, I 
feel like we're just like fun sexual entertainers. So if anybody remembered me at all or jerked off to me once in a while, you know, Girl, you even know when that I they're stop, gonna be, I'm here for that. You yeah. know that you need to give yourself more credit than that because they're going to know who you are, girl. Be like, it's that bitch anywhere. played a good stepmom. <laughs> that bitch could play a stepmom. I mean, like I wonder how else. many people really think that they're your step, that you're stepmom. I hope a fair few. <laughs> Do you have regulars that be like stepmom? They call you like what do they call you? I get a lot of gifts on Mother's Day. Yeah. Oh, I like that. (laughs) And I always, I always try and post on social media that all my porno stepkids should really be giving me gifts as well. I support this Mm -hmm. message. They Mm -hmm. should. You've been doing stepmomming them all up. Are you only stepmommy or are you mommy? Well, you is know, for, diff- for, I mean, for Visa and MasterCard reasons, I am only stepmommy, <laughs> of course, because we like to keep our billing in the clear. Yeah, as you well know, there are many sex acts that are perfectly legal that we do not do because daddy MasterCard and mama Visa won't let us. So, you know, <laughs> you know, stepmommy keep the is- thumb out of your ass when you're fisting, like all that shenanigans where you're like some like group of 10, like white dudes were like, well, that's inappropriate. We should definitely have her say stepmommy and not mommy. And, and Lord knows you can't fist with the whole hand. Cause that would be weird. Like I would love to be a fly on the wall in their content moderation conversations. Cause they own me. us like a motherfucker. This is true. Mm. Those 10 white men. (laughs) They're probably not even. I just, I imagine them as 10 overweight white men. That's like my imagination of these guys having like sexual conversations about us to decide what they'll pay for or not. Like that's my fantasy of it. I like it. So with that being said, what's your biggest pet peeve? (laughs) Not being able to shove both my hands in someone's ass. No, I'm just kidding. Damn it. (laughs) Thumbs out, Sheree. Thumbs out. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, After dark, you never know what's yeah, going to happen man. here with Sheree DeVille. <laughs> the, the regulations, the ever-changing, ridiculous... Like, I don't want to step outside of legal bounds. That's absolutely not what I'm saying. But, like, come on. If they're consenting adults doing consenting things and we want to film it and there are other consenting adults that want to pay for it, let's be able to do that. Do we really want our financial institutions to decide what erotic content we buy? And if we do, does that not seem like a slippery slope for freedom of speech in other areas? Like, like those words. danger, Will Robinson. This is not good. Just because y'all don't care about porn regulations, you should really care about the foundation that this sets for, like, everything. You're just letting them choose parts of our freedom of speech. And, like, to me, that's just, like irritating, patronizing, stupid, so many things, so many adjectives Fuck I could bring to this feeling. I feel <laughs> so what about sex-wise, pet peeve? Is there something that you, if they do, they will absolutely turn you off that you're just like, Ugh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty... You're very pretty easy going with that. I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of weird things that people have done that have not been my jam, um, but personal life and work life are pretty different. In my personal life, like, I wouldn't personally want to do mommy role play. Like, I wouldn't, you know, it's it's not a turn off, but, like, I'm just doing it for you. Mm. And I might do it for you on an occasion, but most of Birthdays my sex, want, sex life, I want to be reciprocal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I want us both to be living that fantasy. So there's nothing that you'd absolutely not, like, off the table? Like, pooping, scat play vomiting uh pain blood all those like hard projectile vomiting all those like liquid things yeah i wouldn't want any of that either Uh, anything sharper and safe in my holes you know but there are plenty of people who genuinely like that so no shade have you had anything in your holes that was safe and not sharp Safe things, yes. Like Sharp what, things, what are these no. safe things? I, you know, one of the biggest, weirdest things I put in there, do you know what a, a I'm going to pronounce this horribly, a daikon radish is? A daikon, daikon radish? Mm. It's a big radish. And I found one at a farmer's market, like Whoa. this motherfucking I wasn't big. expecting, woo! Yeah. <laughs> and I did it, and I fucked myself, and I squirted, and it was beautiful. And then years later, it got taken down for object insertion, because <laughs> now we don't allow non-sexual objects to penetrate our bodies. So it could like, be a dildo, but it can't be a carrot. It cannot be a carrot or a spatula, but it could be a dildo or fingers. Spatula. And it's oh. a shame, because there's a lot of spatula mommy content that I had that is mm. no longer I a I about that. 
No. It's those, it's like those your pussy, dudes at MasterCard. Your pussy and your ass are just one. You cannot insert non-sexual. No, I mean like before the content that you had prior to Oh, the that. radish? The radish was just in my pushy. Pushy. Pusher. <laughs> wow. Now I'm, now I'm, now, now I'm Sean Connery putting radishes in my pushy. I don't know where that came from. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> I Everyone love just it. sit through my terrible Sean Connery impersonation. I'm all for it. I love impersonations. <laughs> I wish I could give you a good one. I like that. I like that. Hmm. I feel like, you know, you've done a really great job in this part. I feel like it's been great. I feel like I want to get to my favorite part because I keep, the, I keep, you know. She wants it. You know, you put something like that near her face. It's been face too long. You know, just I just keep on touching it. You know, I don't know what's going on with me. But no, I think it's time for Truth with Texas. I feel like we've heard all the, you know, typical after dark things, all of those fun things about you. And I've been enjoying getting to know you. I hope that you've been having fun on the couch. so much fun. How about you plug your social medias and things like that before we start? And um, yeah, I'd say, you know, I have a bunch of social media, but the main one at this moment is Instagram, which is Sheree Deville XO. I just lost my TikTok. Oh, no, I haven't. I haven't done TikTok yet. It I'm was fun. It was the most playful social media I had. Mm. It was the least. And not that I'm sexual on Instagram, but I'm thirst trappy. Right. I'm showing things. I'm, want, I'm slutting it up a little. Them, yeah. TikTok, I was just like totally PG and comedic and it got taken down. I'm so sad. Is it because of who you are? Like because of the adult I can thing? only assume like, so, but I was verified and everything. Like I see, I see all, like this last week, I think Riley Reed has talked about how she, they keep telling her, like getting, ticking her off saying that she's impersonating Riley Reed. And she's like, well, I'm Riley Reed. Somebody else got and verified as her. Oh. Verified. That's crazy, especially because the she fuck? put on there like her what her real socials yeah. are, like her whole thing. Like how can you say that and then you just still have it on there? I think it's just super biased. I understand why the people that aren't us pretending to be us try and get us taken down. And my account on TikTok did get taken down two days after I went on a reporting rampage. Mm. So I think I just pissed the wrong person off. I think I got the wrong Sheree Deville account deleted. And they were, you know, making money off my name and off my work and off my TikToks and they got pissed yeah. and they effectively and successfully deleted me. That's shitty because it's like you said, it's a playful thing. You want to have fun. You want your fans to see a different side of you. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's all in fun times, you know, yeah. but uh, hopefully you'll get it back because sometimes I think yeah. you can like say something. I'm and, trying, and do it but without because you didn't do anything wrong. You no, know what I mean? if, so they, it's if, like, if, if a human see. eyeball goes back and looks at any of my TikToks, there, I mean, it's safer than what all these 12 year olds are doing on TikTok in their swimwear and yeah. I also saw that you are, you know, you read your DMs. How is, how is that going? <laughs> Traumatic? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen mine, you know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> cause I'm reading the ones that like, like I have mine set. So like, like you could DM me right away. I'd see it right away. Right. So the only people that are kind of like hidden from me in those requests are people I don't follow. Mm -hmm. And like, those are the ones I'm reading. So they're always like, what's like the chaotic. funniest one you've gotten so far? I f to me, the funniest ones are the ones that make no sense at all. Like they're not sexual or about me. Like, like I think in one of my reading the DMs, one of the first ones I read was just this guy sending me pictures of scarves. Oh, like he wasn't saying wrap yourself up or fuck yourself. And he, he was like, just which like, one do you want? He was just like, this one's nice. This like, it's so he was the creating a conversation shit. with you and just hadn't. Uh, but like with like fifty scarves, like it's those <laughs> weird ones that I'm just like why like this is the only contact we've ever had this is my first and last impression of you and all you're doing is saying hi 12 times <laughs> like what there's some men out there in like real life not hi. just in the dm <laughs> I, mean, I guess he is a real man hi hi has that ever worked in real life or heaven forbid online <laughs> maybe you should say hi one time and see what it does if he just says hi back. hi hey what you hey what you doing I'm on my Instagram wondering what the <laughs> fuck you're texting me for. That's what I'm doing. What are you like? You know, if I didn't know someone and I was trying to impress them, I might tell them a little bit about myself. Would you or, send them a dick pic? I would never send a dick pic. <laughs> no. Especially if I didn't flush the toilet and there was a turd uh, or urine. You've or had that? Oh, no. I've had the Often. toilet, but not the like turd and like flushing. Dirty toilets. <laughs> 
Like, even if it, there's That's no turd, of like, bad cleanliness, I'm like, I don't... I always filthy. inspect, like, the like the room picture, yes. like, where they're, I'm like, what is going on here? There's, like, no sheet on the bed. There's like, some weird stuff going on. Chaos. <laughs> and they want you to Chaos. suck it. No, <laughs> no. Your room is... Your room tells me everything Step I need to know about mad. your dick. Step mommy is mad. Yeah. I'll peg you. <laughs> I'll peg you hard. But none of that's going in my mouth. No, sir. Uh, do you peg for pleasure or for pain? <laughs> Honestly, now for pleasure. But only when, like, I'll peg someone who likes it because they want to get off and that's fun. But that's more of like, a, I do, I'm doing something for you. You might do something for me. But as I've done more dominant work, there is... I don't know if it's sexual pleasure or sadistic <laughs> pleasure in almost like <laughs> venting on someone, mm. almost like taking all of that Feels good, irritating it, shit that people say to us out on someone who wants it. Granted, I do not like non-consensual stuff, but yeah. if someone wants to be fucked up and I can say some shit <laughs> and like vent my shit. heart out, thank you. Thank bless you for being your, my sounding board. Heart. Mm. I had a mm. similar thing went with the like whole aggression thing being let out. It was uh, Australia, the sex boats. You could do the first one we did was like a sex bet that you'd have a signing and they're all in Australia. It's all into BDSM stuff. They were mm. all like signed, like sign me up. And I had never came somebody. And yeah. I was like, I don't against associate pain like and sex, like something that wouldn't turn me on. Um, so I was like, oh, I can't, can you like do it? And then they're like calling me a bitch. And I'm like, I don't like that either. So like at first, and then it's a cane. So it's yeah. like, you know, and it was like a little thing. And then at the end I was like, whoosh, I was smacking the shit out of people like left and right. And there was this one guy, I swear he probably remembers me forever in life. Cause I know I remember him, <laughs> but I like caned him so bad. Like he probably couldn't sit down for a week right. and he, I bet he loved it. Loved it. Every absolutely second. loved it but I was like every I time need he to tried stop to sit because he thought exactly of you. I was like I need to stop because I should go to jail I'm like this is horrible like it was like it was bad I was like I was like let me put this cane down I I, I resigned my cane in Australia but if everyone's <laughs> loving it it's like you get to vent and they get sexual pleasure it's like yes. win because it was win, more like win. I've been here for 12 hours <laughs> it's like who's talking shit to me <laughs> Yeah, 10 guys tried to grab my ass, not consensually. Like, now I'm going to take some shit are, see, out See, that's on where you. the good resting bitch face really comes in play. Because I'm one of those people, like, this has it happened. Have they tried? 1,000. But I learned a long time ago from a girl. She was like, and I never really had to do it, but I did definitely maybe a couple, a couple times. She was like, when they do that, she's like, oh, I just take their hand in the back and I put, twist their hand. And, and she's like, they want a good picture, so they just do it. But they never touch me again, mommy. And yeah. I was like... Yeah. Obviously, she was a Spanish chick, but she was a badass bitch. Good. I was like, yeah. So for me, I if I saw or like I read people really well. So I was like, if I saw the enticing of like them either wanting to or try, I'd be like, uh, don't touch her, grab her, you're not getting anything and you're not getting Nothing. your fun. So yeah. I go, but if you let me touch you or let me touch and put your hands where I want to, then I feel comfortable. But just don't grab totally. me. I'm not a piece of meat. Like I don't like that feeling, even though I know people know me from my ass. Respect the booty. Hands sure. off, no bruises. It's But it's mine. yours. Exactly. That's the key word. It's, it's mine. Yours. Mine. All right. I got a little off sidetracked, but you know, it's just the fun talking to you. All right. So let's play Truth with Texas. Yes. How this is going to go, there's four aces. Ooh. Each ace is a different type of question. And we're going to get down to it. Yeah, I'm ready. Are you ready? All right. Here we go. All right. Ooh. Ace of Hearts is our romantic question. Ooh. Would you consider yourself a romantic? <clears throat> Yes. What's the most romantic thing you've done for a partner? It kind of depends on their love language, okay. you know, but I'm willing to spend inordinate amounts of time planning something that I think any of my partners will like, whether it is a vacation or a special night or they'll mention something that they want or have maybe always missed in their childhood. Like, I will remember that shit and I will make that happen for you. Like, okay. nothing gives me more joy than to do something unexpected like for someone I love. Something thoughtful and unexpected, you know? Mm. What is your favorite body part that you're most feel accomplished about? Oh, my God. My favorite body part. In high school, it used to be my abs. <laughs> and then that ship sailed. <laughs> and then <laughs> it's probably my ass. Uh, but now, I don't know. I just, I feel like I just like my figure. I feel like I'm comfortable in my body. I've been working out more. So I feel like it does what I want it to do. 
And I've been taking a lot more pride in like my functionality than my look lately. Nice. And like, it's, I feel like it's a good place for you me. You got the whole package, Miss Sheree. <clears throat> I like it. Biggest turn on. Honestly, I know this is so fucking cliche, but it, I feel it in my heart when I see a really confident person. Mm. Like there is something magnetic about someone who owns their own skin. And I don't even know what actions they're doing. I think it's, it, just the way they hold themselves, you know? I haven't had that many crushes in life, probably less than 10 where I'm like fluttering in my heart out of my mind. And every time it's a person, you know, man or woman that has that, you know? That it factor. Yeah, and, and everyone's like, oh, do you have trouble dating in porn? I haven't, but I think somehow my heart weeds out people that aren't confident enough to deal with my job just as happenstance mm -hmm. you know it just happened to be my preference and then this happens to be my job and then like the people I date just happen to be okay with it but that is not the experience I hear from most people so it just must be like the people that give me the flutters it's like my body knows I think that has to do with exactly what you'd like at that appeal of like it's that mirror image is like you also you two are confident yourself and you're just very you own your shit. I think you're sexual if you're this or whatever. And so people can kind of see like, oh, you, yeah, like you said to your about your friends, they didn't uh, not think that you were not sexual or far through that you would have been in porn type of relationship kind of yeah. thing. Um, so it, I feel like that goes with in your personal life as well. Like just just who you are. Like it's, you're just very like this is me and this is what it is. And right. so it attracts the same type similarities. You want to be with me? This is it. If, if not, you don't, bye. Bye. I'm not gonna <laughs> like. Oh, so you know so many people, and for some people it's the right move because it's what they wanted. But I know so many people who wanted to stay in the business would have stayed in the business and found a jealous partner that removed them from the business. I don't know very many other jobs where your significant other would be like, actually, can you quit your job for me? Thanks. For sure. Yeah, Thanks. I relate. I get that too. But I also feel <laughs> like, like with myself, I chose to leave when I wanted That's to That's different leave. though. That's and, totally different. But I did different. also have a, a boyfriend that didn't want me to be in the business. But at that time, I had the choice to be in the business how I wanted to be. Like I never fully left and did whatever. Yeah. But I also understand that like the whole, because it's like you're losing a part of your identity if you're letting doing it for somebody else. Yeah, you know if, I mean? if, for if you're wrong only reasons. doing it for somebody else. For if, sure. If you were waiting for that moment, like... Like I have friends that are just like hopeless romantics and it's beautiful and they were waiting to find that partner that made them want to quit mm -hmm. and then they quit and then they moved on to another beautiful chapter of their lives and that's fantastic. I'm not throwing shade on quitting for love. Yeah. But it's sad to see what usually ends up being a temporary relationship to take them out of peak I'm just being business, peak earning years. For sure. And then they, come, they come back in the business and then it's not really the, the same. The reboot's not the really same. Really yeah. They try to change things up. No, I get that. Yeah. What would you say would be the dumbest thing you've ever done to get somebody's attention for love? <laughs> I remember in college, <laughs> there's this like really cute boy that lived below me. And this was how strong my game was then. I knocked on the door. He opened. And I was like, Hi. <laughs> And then nothing for a bit too long. Do you have, and I, mind you, I lived two steps above. Do, do you have a, a cup of water? <laughs> it's a water. <laughs> it worked. We still ended up banging, but like. Immediately? I thought, no, no, but later on. Okay. But to no credit to my flirting abilities, I was probably like the worst, lamest. Like, do you, do you have water? Do you have water? <laughs> Yeah, I've been like, um, are you lost? Yeah. <laughs> Ma'am, are you okay? You know you have water at your sink hey, right there. Hey, but ballsy enough to <laughs> knock on the door. He was probably like, uh, um, yes, ma'am. It worked out. <laughs> it worked out. All right, next card. Oh, see, it's the shoulder thing. I, yes. I think I'm used to it. Ooh, our favorite here, Ace of Spades. Oh, is it? Is it the best it's one? a naughty question. Oh, which all right. All a little right. naughty. Hmm, have you ever made a woman squirt? Yes. Yeah. Do you squirt? Rarely, but yes. Lube or spit? Spit. Spit or swallow? It depends if I'm showing it off for them. Like some people really like to like see it and show it off. Like mm -hmm. I used to always just swallow because like, I don't know, that just seemed... Accomplished? Efficient? I don't know. <laughs> Less like, messy? Whatever. It just seemed right. But like now I know that some people really like to like see it. So then I'll let it like drip down my face or I'll play with it or... Stuff like that, but all it kind of depends on the partner. Do you have, I already know this. Do you own any sex toys? <laughs> a fair few. 
<laughs> a fair few. What is your favorite sex toy to you? Do you have like one that's like, do you have like For a me, drawer? Do you have one that you go to that's like that go-to one? I have um, three bins that are kind of like they slide into a... Um, for a better word, like a bookshelf, and they each have different types of toys in them. But like, if I'm just masturbating for me, this is not being filmed. Like, I don't even need to make an experience for me. Like, I just want to like get off and go to fucking bed. It'll be a vibrator. Mm. Hitachi is my favorite, Hitachi but sometimes it's a in little them. intense. Mm. So I'll go like um, Lilo Hitachi, depending on like Lilo's the exact just makes experience. Me mad. Lilo's, I feel like, never really like gave me the right. Maybe. Do you have the one that goes in and out and vibrates? I stopped fucking with them for a long time. Like I, cause I used to do toy stuff all the time, yeah. uh, like to conventions and things yeah, like yeah. that and like signings. And they would give me, after the one I was like, I, I th- remember being so frustrated cause I was at, it was a hotel and I'd take it cause I wanted to masturbate. I yeah. threw it across the room, never looked back. I didn't oh, never, that. but maybe cause now they're better. I don't really know. But I also too, they have a, a lot of different ones I'm a Hitachi though. girl. So, yeah. you know, Hitachi is amazing. The only other one that I've found close is the one that like has really, really strong vibration on the click because I like really strong vibration and really strong vibration uh, in the G spot. And you just insert it and it's. And that's the Lilo one? Yeah, but I'm sure they have Mm. a million others that are different. But like, I don't know about you, but I need like, if you're going to vibrate me, vibrate. For sure. Hard. I feel like my my masturbating has different and evolved in the last year too because it's like I'm not having a lot of sex. So for me, it's like I before didn't like to have to like fuck myself with a dildo. I would only do like yeah. external like with, with the Hitachi. Yeah. But now because it wasn't in that, you know, you know, I definitely have uh, used a different kind of toys. You know, I'm definitely about, yes. yeah, I like the both. Both yeah. is always bad. It's like, you know, best of both worlds. You know, I have really, really short arms. So it's hard for me to fuck myself with a dildo comfortably and come at the same time. Mm. So like if I'm masturbating alone, I'll usually, if I'm going to do an insertion, which is only like 10% of the time, I insert it and I probably just like leave it in there, like in a deep spot that I like. Cause I'm just like, I feel like it's a yeah. lot happening with these little arms. Otherwise, it. <laughs> the size matter. I think to a point. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You're like, like it down. but it matters on both sides. You know, like, like one of my best civilian friends divorced her husband because his dick was too big after about three years. Because she, uh, how her, did you not know that in the beginning? She did, but I think it's big dicks can feel really good until you're having sex with them five days a week. Do you know what I mean? So I think she wanted a more like, for her body, a more like regular use penis. You know what I mean? That's different for everybody. Was that the only reason why she left was her other stuff too? Because- Well, when the sex life dies, everything else dies, So she just didn't want to have sex with him She was unable to have sex with him a lot and it wasn't good for either of them. You know what I mean? And then of course, like if something is really, really small, it- it's fine with me, but it won't be your penis we're using to penetrate me. Mm. Maybe you can do oral on me. Maybe you can use your fingers. Maybe you can wear a strap on. But I don't do need a ever, huge dong, but I need but I mean not a micro penis. But all the time, though? All the time a micro penis? No, I mean, as far as like, even if it wasn't a micro, but small, but you said he could do it. See, other I things date other women holes, too, you know? though, so I'm okay with no penis at all. Mm, okay. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. So his penis... Wouldn't matter to me that much, although it might not end up being the tool that makes me come from penetration. Like he'd have to be okay with that if he had one that wasn't enough for me There's to orgasm just... with from penetration. Yeah. Have you ever faked an orgasm? On set. <laughs> and maybe when I was younger, but now I'm just like, no, you didn't make me come. And like, that's okay. Like not even in like a snotty, shady way, but like let's both learn more about our bodies. Like let's, let's communicate about what I like. Let's communicate about what makes me come or like know that you didn't quite get me there with that. Like, do you want to use a vibrator on me? Would you like to go down on me now? Like there are lots of options and I don't feel like we need to lie to each other. Cause like, I want to come. That's important. I want to come. That's important, especially because I feel like a lot of people nowadays that are so easy to like just fuck and like you know they don't even know anything about this person or whatever. But it's like you're so easy to do that, but you're fucking that person, putting them to your body. So yeah. I would rather be more communicative and made it enjoyable for all parties involved than yeah. just be like stick it in and then I'm mad. Especially <laughs> if it's a one night stand. Like I've spent all this time just to have sex with you. I'm gonna have a fucking orgasm one way or another. That's how you I was. Know? Like, I'm like mm. I gotta be here all day. I'm coming. Like yeah. I'm not gonna. And not come. You know I know what I, mean? what I can do to make my body come, and let's go. Let's do <laughs> let's this. I can go. Yeah. All right. Next card. 
Ace of Clubs. It's a kinky question. Ooh. Favorite time of day to have sex? I'm not a night person. Mm, Honestly, and not that I don't have sex at night, but like if you want like emotional connection, contact, energy, it's going to be well before 8 p.m. to be honest. Or you're just laying there. <sighs> I'm just... <laughs> I'm more tired. I don't ever see you I'm ever just laying no, there. No, but I'm, I'm starting to like wrap my day up a little. I'm getting more, no you know, fatigued. If I fuck at night, it'll be like, maybe we're going to do like spoon and it's going to be nice and we'll have an orgasm. Romantic. And then, you know what I mean? It's not going to be like this whole thing, you know? Have you ever been caught masturbating? Yes. How did that go down? Well, when I was younger with my parents <laughs> and embarrassing. <laughs> Did they like shame you for it? No, no, no. no they no. just shut the door and was like, "Ah, oh, come back out when you're done. Yeah, like we all knew we knew, and then yeah, I think there about was like a conversation didn't... like the next day, like about exploring your body and like. Na, na, na. At least they were, you know, <laughs> talking about in educational yeah. ways. <laughs> <laughs> Most number of times you've had sex in one day. Oh, I don't know the answer to that. It's got to be more than five. Okay. <laughs> I love that you have, you're like mm. I don't I, I, I actually do not know to it's got to be more than five to be determined I feel confident about that answer but like is it 10 I don't know but how many times have you masturbated in one day oh god a lot <laughs> even in one session I like I'm not a one and done kind of girl like, like even four? if I'm doing it to go to bed like at least two at least two. I'm like two or three for sure. One, yeah. it's like, I feel like you're just getting there and then you're like, yeah, let me try this again. Yeah. Mm, let's get, let's get, yeah, let's yeah, get this yeah. going. Last dirty dream you had. I have a lot of dirty dreams. I have a lot of dirty Do dreams. Do you act out those dirty dreams in your content? You know, I should. I feel like a lot of my dreams in general are more like nebulous. Like I had a dream recently about a girl and I can't even like picture her face even right after the dream, just eating me out. That was the whole dream. Just like, what oral sex felt like from her. Do you, you know? wake up with like a wet dream aspect or is I, it? I can come in my dreams. Mm. Yeah. Or I feel like I do. Yeah. yeah. That's intense. What type of porn turns you on? Now, because I know everyone and I feel <laughs> like I'm like, she doesn't like her. They used to date. You that know all the logistics of it? It like definitely dulls the fantasy and I don't like amateur porn because it's so like poorly filmed for the most part. Uh, animated. Mm. all animated porn I love it was love that something it, you were it, ever into it. before or just of recently because of everything you explained uh th throughout most of my life I just used my mind just fantasies in my head um That's how I am. so yeah I feel like I very 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 rarely watch porn at all and pre-internet like I wasn't going to go out and buy a porn like I remember some of my college roommates had a porn and Julianne was in it actually <laughs> and that was like my only porn for like college mm -hmm. like I never spent money to to, to seek it out because my mind is pretty good in yeah. my opinion for masturbating so it wasn't even until like the age of like super convenient internet that I even bothered to seek out any porn at all and then by that time I was doing porn so it was animated porn mm. yeah have you ever hooked up with someone and kept it a secret from your friends probably <laughs> probably like a long long time I don't know what I have <sighs> that's a maybe nothing maybe. that I can think of but like I can imagine that has happened before but not for anything like shady like that was your boyfriend or whatever but just from like I don't know maybe it's my fun yeah you know have you ever had revenge sex like with an ex or something mm -hmm. I've or like had a, a lot of or ex. to like piss off an ex or like to do never to piss off an ex definitely with an ex but I'm not sure it feels revengey it's always felt like oh my god we shouldn't be doing this we're totally broke up we're so toxic for each other let's <laughs> you know what I mean I don't know if that's no, no, revenge yes. but no yeah no. this is terrible we're it ended so badly last, last time let's buck you know <laughs> I like these scenarios playing out in your heart yeah <laughs> all right last one is a diamond which is a spicy question the longest you've gone without sex hmm Since I started having sex, the longest I've gone without sex couldn't be more than a month. More than a month? Yeah, I doubt it. I doubt it. Fantasy threesome. <sighs> Definitely involves Angelina Jolie. Hot? Definitely involves her. And honestly, any penis at all. 
I just want like a nice dick and her and I. Like her and I doing stuff, playing with a dick. That's nice. Yeah. Have you ever called someone the wrong name during sex? I don't think so. I don't think I have. Stick to baby? Yeah. (laughs) But you know what? That's a good point because I don't, even now, like, unless I'm on set expected to say their name, like, like if we were fucking off camera, I wouldn't keep saying your name. I just don't, I don't know why I don't do that, but I don't do that. I don't know why. I always kept, I used to bartend a long time ago, so I was always baby and sweetie. Just words of endearment because I was like, I yeah. just don't remember your name, so yeah. I'm going to tell you what you, yeah. it's always, it's endearing. It's just, you know. They're happy. You yeah. don't know if it's going to be or not. What's the most embarrassing thing that's happened to you on set? <laughs> Honestly, and it's not even sexual, but it's, to me, so embarrassing. So I was the last scene late at night at the end of the day of this huge feature. Everybody wants to go home. We have a little bit of dialogue, then we're going to bang, and then, again, Everyone's everybody home. finally gets to go home. Like, I'm sure it's midnight, right? So I have this glass of wine that I'm supposed to yeet into my coworker's face. We're going to get in an argument, and we're going to bang. It's like three words, yeet, bang. The glass was kind of rounded, and I was <laughs> super cagey about, like, throwing anything into like a coworker's face. face. Like there's only one take. The cameras are watching. I got the thing. He's going to get wet. Oh my God. Like I have like a lot of nervous energy. It's a lot of anxiety going on. You're like, for it's, me, it's it kind of like a pop shot, but yes. not like, you're just like, they're lying on me. Yeah. So I, whoosh, and it swooshes back. In your face? Oh shit. <laughs> into my own face. <sighs> Everyone is now pretending that that's Okay. And it's they funny, go home. right? Back into hair and makeup, of course. Oh. I yeeted it into my own made-up face. Oh. I get back out. Everyone's trying to be positive. I can tell they're not, but like you know, you're the star. Everyone's gonna kiss your ass, and because you gotta fuck, like they don't want to fuck with your head until you do your job, or right? Do they? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I do it again, bitch. <laughs> Why did they give you another glass? It's I their don't know. fault. It's their fault. This is their fault. <laughs> but how can I not do that? Like, so what did, they, did you not- did you go back to hair and makeup? A little bit, and then I finally fucking figured out. They're like, the just pour it on his head. Like this, what, like yeah, have you never like tossed a grain drink in someone's face? I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was that's, really embarrassing. Yeah. Like really, emb- I would rather it's shit really- on someone. <laughs> I would rather poop on a dick. Then do that again twice. I'm dead. Yes. You'd rather shit on somebody? Yes. Uh, at least like if you're doing anal, like they know it's what like they to came expected. to town for. You know what I mean? Like not that that's happened yet. Knock on wood. But like, I feel like you'd just uh, be like, oh yeah, this is what like, but how are you so dumb that you like, it was like a different kind of embarrassing. I mean, it's it's <laughs> cute after the fact, but I'm sure if I was on set, I'd be like, what is this bitch doing? <laughs> we are now here for two more hours because she can't throw water at, like, no, girl. Uh, I no. love that. I love that. Well, thank you for being <laughs> honest and sharing with us here at Private Talk After Dark. Thank you so much for coming on. Please plug your um, Instagram again so we can follow you. Cherie Deville XO, because oh. the others got the leap. But we're going to make sure this one stays. All right, Private Talk, make sure that you follow her. Make sure that you do all those things and see what she's up to. Stepmommy may have some things she wants to tell you. So make sure you go over and support her. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time.